If you've been struggling with pornography and lust and masturbation, I want you to know that God can deliver you from this. I know sometimes you feel as if you are all alone and as if you are just in this cycle and maybe you stop for a week and after some time you get back to it. But when you make a complete turn from it, I want you to believe that with the help of the Holy Spirit is going to help you uh, quit that forever. I stumbled upon a video today uh, from one uh, channel. I'll link the video in the description. And there was this guy who was giving a testimony of how he was delivered from the addiction of pornography f after 40 years. And I was looking at this and I was like, what is this? 40 years and still God can deliver you from this. Although it was catastrophic, he lost his marriage, he lost his uh, relationship with his daughter, and it was painful. So I want us to watch this video, and I'm going to react where possible. But uh, just get it right from me that God is able to deliver you. So my friend, without further ado, let's get started. I've been a Christian for 20 years. Uh, but for 40 years, my entire life, I have struggled with addiction to things like pornography and sexual things. And it has, uh, even though as I was a Christian, it still plagued me. And four years ago, it came out that I was having an affair and I lost everything in one weekend because of it. Even though I was a Christian, it was still a struggle in my mind and my heart and everything. And I couldn't break free from it. And I lost everything that weekend. My marriage, my children, both my jobs, I became homeless. And that was the day that God said, it's time. And then he started me on a journey of rebuilding my life, but he started from the ground up. He had to break me down. And then about six months later, well, God had given me a small business. And about six months later, I started that business in my friend's garage while I was living in his basement. I still had lost so many things in my life, but God was slowly rebuilding those things, bringing them back conversation after conversation, these kinds of things with people, all sorts of stuff. And he took me to the lowest point in my life standing in that garage. He, one day he came to me and held a divine mirror up in front of me and said, you are the man. You did this, and I had nothing left because he exposed everything in me. He brought it all to the surface, and he said, you have no excuses. That's it. It's done. Okay, this reminds me. Um, he, he's saying that he was broken to a point that he lost everything he had, and God started rebuilding him from the ground. And this reminds me when I was teaching about uh, why God separates us for his purpose. And you realize sometimes God separates you even from your own family, from your own people to just prepare you for his service. And I believe this is what uh, this guy was going through, that God separated him from the family and he broke him to a level that he now needs to start from scratch. And God had to take him through the tough times. And I I, I thought and said that, that when, when you are in that separation time, you pass through challenges and trials that are not pleasant. But all these trials are meant to nurture that gift that God has given you and that service that he's preparing you for. So sometimes you might go through some uh, challenges and tough moments and alone moments, but that should not wear you down. Why? Because God is just preparing you for a better future. So um, I believe that is what he was going through, but let's see how he was able to get out of that. And that was my lowest day, the lowest day of my life. Uh, and, and he kind of let me wallow in that for a couple of hours. He let me understand really who I truly was, that Holy Spirit divine exposure. And then after that, he came back to me that same day, and he said to me, you are a fighter. I've allowed these circumstances to be stacked up against you for a reason. I've, you've lost everything. Everything has been taken from you. You have been turned against by just about everybody around you because of your sin. But I've allowed the circumstances because I called you to be, from the moment you were born, to be a fighter. You've been one your entire life. The problem is you have been at war with everybody around you since you were a little boy. So it's time for you to get into the right fight, stand up, and get out there and start fighting for the hearts of the people around you. Now go. And when he said that to me, something inside of me changed permanently. And I stood up and I couldn't help but just move. I was so broken and because of the shame, everything inside of me for so many years, being lying and hiding. And I was just, I couldn't just stand up. But God stood me up and said, go. And that day he sent me out after my daughter, my adult daughter, who wanted nothing to do with me. And he drove me to her work. And I marched in that door and I said, I've got one thing to say to you. I love you. And what I didn't know was that morning, she had reached her lowest point ever. And God told her, don't give up, don't quit. 
don't give the throw in the towel. And he said to her, or she said, she started crying out to him, I just want somebody to tell me they love me. And that was the day God broke my heart and sent me after my daughter. But that began the process in my life of rebuilding. And God knew that I had to stand up and fight. And the biggest battle ever started from within me. He started bringing it out of me. And he started taking me to the darkest places in my life. The deepest, darkest places. The scariest places. We all know those spots in our hearts and minds. Okay, I, I love this reconnection where he now reconnects with his daughter after feeling that he needs just to go and tell her, I love you. And uh, it's a miracle to just find that she wanted someone to tell her that he loves her. And uh, he did that and they got to reconnect and God started rebuilding his relationship with, with his daughter. And we see that at the end of the day now, he is now getting the courage to face the world. Remember, he's broken and he's feeling uh, embarrassed and ashamed of himself, but God is rebuilding him. And he mentioned something, that when God is doing all this, he starts from within. He cannot affect you from outside. He starts from you, yourself, from the inside. When you feel broken, when you feel condemned, when you feel embarrassed, it makes you, it helps your heart and your soul to reconnect back to the Creator and know what God is planning for you and know the service that God has prepared for you. And uh, so if it starts from within, it creates you or it prepares you for a better better future and he says that god promised him that when i created you i created you as a fighter and as a victor and therefore he must rebuild you just from the inside so don't give up uh, just realize that truth and and measure on your on your strengths and those strengths are going to help you uh, even focus more so uh, let's watch and see what happens thereafter. And he started taking me there. A couple years later, he took me to some counseling in Montana. And in the middle of that week, he showed me. I have never truly rested in that, that salvation that I've been given. Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 talks about resting in Christ, sitting on what he had finished and completed. And I realized I'd never been that because I thought he was going to reject me just like everybody else had. And I knew the only way to heal was to give him access to my entire heart. And I couldn't do it. Largest leap of faith I ever took was hiking up a mountain that week. And when I got halfway to the top, I told the Lord, I'll sit and rest as soon as I get to the top. And he said, no, stop right here, sit and rest. And as soon as I did that, two footsteps to the left, I sat on the ground and I started bawling. 40 years worth of pain, 40 years worth of rejection, all this stuff from a little boy, all the trauma started coming to the surface. God said, do not move until I tell you to. Stay here. Okay. He's just mentioned this point and it has reminded me. Um, in my local church, we are tackling a topic about listening and taking heed when God speaks. And he says that the Lord told him not to move. He was like, I want to move out. But the Lord told him, you need to sit and wait. And when he did that, God visited him. We're also reading from uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, where God instructed the king that you need to wait. You are not going to fight, okay? And when, they, when the king did that, God gave him victory. They came and realized that God had already made these people to fight against themselves. So when God told him, you need to sit and wait, and then he listened to the voice and took heed of the voice, God was able to speak to him and that was his turning point. So this teaches us also, you need to listen to what God speaks to you and not only listen, but also take heed of what he says. He might just want you to stay in that position. You just need to stay, don't move. And if he tells you move, get out of here, please do so. You also can look at the apostles in, in Acts chapter one, when, when Jesus ascends to heaven, he tells them, remain in Jerusalem. Why? I'm going to send my spirit and the spirit of the Lord is going to teach you even greater things that I've not taught you. And now Peter and the rest of the apostles were able to sit uh, at Jerusalem and wait upon the spirit of the Lord. In chapter two, we see the day of Pentecost and the spirit of the Lord was upon them in Jerusalem and now they moved to other parts of uh, uh, the world to teach the word. So if they could not have taken heed of the word of Jesus Christ, then they could have missed on this. So my friend, you need to listen to what God says and take heed of the instructions. Okay, uh, let's finish up this. And I fell asleep right there on the ground and I cried. 
And I cried and I slept and I woke up and God said, you can move along. He told me to stay there until I tell you to move. And he said, you can move. And after that, I started making my way back down. I got to the bottom. I started driving away in my truck. And God said this, two people went up that mountain today, but only one came down. That sad, scared, broken little boy was laid to rest up there. And he said to me, I did that. Enter into my rest, your strivings have ceased. Come on, give God a shout of praise for that. That's wow. so awesome. Wow. This shows so us how we, when we surrender completely our pain, our issues, our heartbreaks, everything to God and give our problems into his hands, he'll put peace into our hearts. And Eric, can you tell us what happened afterwards and how God continued to restore your life? So uh, even through all of those things, I still struggled with those things. I still hid them and I couldn't break free from them. I had accountability software on everything, even the toaster. I mean, it, I went to meetings, I did all these things and I still couldn't get away from it until the Race to Deliver conference. The Sunday morning, the Sunday morning, I went forward for prayer. I thought I was leaving because I had to get to a birthday party. God drove me to the front, and I stood there praying. I don't know who it was, hands up in the air, eyes closed. Someone started praying over me, and they moved on. Then somebody else came and started praying over me also, and they started praying this prayer, and they just prayed and prayed, and it started getting more intense and more intense, and all of a sudden, they started saying things like, come out of him right now. Come out of him. Get out of him, and I'm just bawling. Come, leave her. Just go. Get out of this man, and then he said, leave and never come back in Jesus' name. And he turned around and walked away. I didn't realize till about two or three day, days later that I had been delivered from 40 years worth of addiction to pornography and sexual addiction. Come on, give God a shout of praise in this place. Amen, amen. And, and we see now this guy in that broken state, in that state where he's like, he hates himself. He's embarrassed, but God is able to visit him and delivers him from 40 years of struggle with pornography and sexual immorality and all uh, that is related to that. And uh, this just shows the greatest love of God towards humanity. And God does not delight in us having pain. He doesn't delight in that. He needs us to enjoy this life. And that's why he is constantly looking for us, searching for our hearts to just come in his presence and just feel good in his presence. And uh, this guy was delivered from all this. And I just want to say uh, thank you so much for this testimony because I know it's going to transform the life of someone somewhere. So don't give up. Uh, continue pressing on. Listen to what the Lord says. Take heed of what the Lord says. And I'm pretty sure that God is going to help you throughout this. I'm going to link a full video in the description. Go and watch the full uh, uh, testimony. And I'm sure that God is going to bless you. But I just felt like sharing with you those who are undergoing this and are going through pain and through embarrassment and through lust and pornography and masturbation and all that. I just want to tell you, if you turn completely to God, he is willing to deliver you from all that. So please share this video to your friends and all that you know so that they can also get this information and I hope it's going to help them so much. Hey, you've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give us a like and also subscribe for more videos. Now, click here to watch our next video and I'm pretty sure that I will see you in that video. Peace.